Hallelujah. We welcome you. We welcome you to Living Word Christian Fellowship. If you're looking us up, you can look us up, LWCFGL. We're live on Facebook right now. We soon will start being live on YouTube. My learning curve has been stressed a little bit in this time. I'm taking my time making sure I get it right. We're also making sure we can broadcast with clarity as much as possible. But we are on Facebook right now, and uh, we welcome you. We're so glad you could be with us today. You're our family today, praise God. Hallelujah. We want you to know we were celebrating that this is the second day of Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, a time when we believe that our God sent his own son to be born into the world. But it's also a time that tells us that he's coming back, and I believe for a thousand years, he's going to reign here on this earth. Do you believe that? I believe that is the spiritual fulfillment of Sukkot, is the Lord reigning here and doing what he does here on this earth for a thousand years. And you know what's going to happen after that? People always talk about the end of the world. The end of the world. Well, really, there's no end of the world. The Bible says world without end. But there will be a complete cleansing and transformation of the world. The Bible says this world that now is, is going to be completely reshaped by fire. Amen. We won't be here, praise God. We're not going to be, yeah, hallelujah. <laughs> not a good place to be at that time. If you were here, you'd be just like the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. You'd do fine because God would make it that way. But we're not going to be here until after that. And when that earth is reformed, I believe there might be something about that newly created earth that's going to teach all of our great scientists that talk millions and billions and trillions of years all the time. They talk it like they know what they're talking about. They talk about it like they have a little gauge that they can set out and say, oh yeah, this is this old. But the fact is, I believe God's going to show at that time how quickly he can do things. Amen. And that reformed earth is going to be the place, listen now, you need to understand this, this new reformed earth, this cleansed earth is going to be the place where heaven comes down to. And we'll spend eternity in that place. There will be the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. I believe right now, if you could had eyes to see it, it sits right above Jerusalem today. I believe it sits right, the heavenly Jerusalem's already there today. There may still be work being done on it, but I, the way the Lord works, I don't think it takes too long to get things done. When Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you, I don't think he meant it's going to take me at least 2,000 years to get this done. You know, what he's building is the people that are here on this earth have to be built up in him. And when that happens, oh, praise God, he's coming again. Hallelujah. So celebrate Sukkot. It's a time to remember. And we, re we recommend it with all of our heart that you find out about the feasts of God, learn about the feasts of God, and commemorate them. The Lord said, they're my feasts. Amen. We taught about these uh, a while back in the Signs of the Times teaching. You can find them. And by the way, if you want to look on Facebook, you'll see that we have split it up to the signs of the time. And then there's another one called Spirit and Soul. A couple of different playlists you can look up on those. So look them up. I think that uh, Signs of the Time playlist is also on YouTube. Uh, all of these things. It's amazing to me how they hide them and you have to search for them when you get into them. But they're there, praise God. And you can find them. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, today I want to talk to you about a continuation of what we've been talking about. And it actually starts right with Hebrews 4.12. We've started there so long, and I'm sure some of you say, I've heard that before. But the fact is, it's not what you've heard before, it's what you hear and hear that brings faith. If you'll notice, Jesus, or the Hebrews, writer of Hebrews, who was inspired by Jesus to say this, the Word of God, he didn't say the faith come, or actually this is in Romans. The writer of Romans was Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit. He did not say faith cometh by having heard. 
Did you ever notice that? There's a big difference in saying, well, I've heard that. That just indicates to me that you've shut your teachability off. When people say, I've already heard that, you just shut off your teachability. Sometimes my wife tries to tell me something, and I say, I've heard that before. And she'll say, wait a second, I'm trying to tell you something here, and I have to shut up for a minute. And then she tells me something that I didn't know about what she was saying. The Holy Spirit does this to all of us, to all of us. So do not ever become one who acts like the gospel is old hat. It's the old, old story, but will be my theme and glory. Amen. It's going to be something we're going to be talking about forever. And every time the name of Jesus is said, there's going to be praise and adoration. It's never going to be old. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord forever. So, read it with me. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. There's four things mentioned there, soul, spirit, joints and marrow are one thing, speaking of your body, and then there's something about your heart, four things being spoken of. We are spirits. Everyone that God created, he created as a spirit. That is your essence. If you want to know who's the real you, you're a spirit. You do have a soul. And it's not something that you kind of carry around in your pocket. In fact, to a lot of people, it's what they, what they always are showing is their soul. But it's not the way God made us. He made us to stand as spirits. Recognize that we're spirits. Oh, there would be a complete change in all of us if we really come to full revelation of what that means, that I am a spirit. I'm a spirit. I have a soul, and I live in a body. But in the middle of the soul and the spirit, someplace, and it kind of is described, I would say, by that word heart as being in the middle. Jesus said, out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. That's King James English but it kind of sets it so you understand it's center, center. Out of their bellies shall flow rivers of living water. By the way, this is not your belly. Your belly's up here. Your belly's up a lot closer to your physical heart. Amen. And I believe it's the center of you. Amen. And the word of God is the key in this whole thing. The word of God. And what we're doing here, our whole... uh, Teaching aim is to get us to a place where we recognize the Spirit and operate in the Spirit. When you were born again, God's Spirit, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, you read about this in John 17 when Jesus prayed about it, He's in your spirit. He's there all the time. He doesn't come and go. You say, oh, I really felt God today. He was really really with me. He's always really with you. It's your feelers that are messed up. You ever get your feelers hurt? (laughs) It's our feelers that are messed up. No, those are part of sense. And sensuality has to be bridled, has to be brought into a place where it's controlled. We're not talking about getting rid of your soul. We're talking about reining it in. We said, reign in me, Jesus. We sang about it this morning. Lord, reign in me. Reign in me. King Jesus, reign in me. He sits on the throne. He's the king. He reigns in me. Hallelujah. Now, what are we doing? We want to bring everything into control. Why? Because in this plan of God, his plan is that all of the people of the world would be full of his spirit. Did you know that? How, do you, how can you say that, Pastor? Look at some of these people. Just look around you. I choose not to look around me right now. Thank you. I choose not to, not to keep my uh, gaze on that. I've got my eyes looking past that. I'm seeing with a different set of eyes. How about you? How can I say that? Because God said, I'm not willing that any 
perish. I'm willing that all should come unto salvation. Scripture says, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. So I know it's his will that everyone he created would be saved. Amen. I know that. And I know if they're saved, then the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit would dwell in the midst of them. Now, don't go out of here and say, I said that everyone will be saved. No, because we have a part in this thing. And the part is, to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe or trust in his name. Amen. And it speaks about that. It says they were born, not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. John 1, 13, John 1, 12 and 13 says that very clearly. That's who we are. So why did he do it? Well, when he put his spirit inside of mankind, it's for a reason. You, want it, you know what he wants us to do? He wants us to fulfill the blessing that he gave us in Adam. When he breathed on Adam, he said, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and have dominion in it. Have dominion in it. Say, have dominion in it. Now, you've got to stop when you say have dominion because some people get all bent out of shape about dominion. I had somebody t drawing up a, uh, a uh, logo for the church one time, and I told them I wanted, I wanted a sword drawn on the logo that would show motion. And that's hard to do, you know, in art, unless you're quite an artist. Do you know the person was offended by the fact that I would use a sword? Well, I didn't make this up. It's right here. It's sharper. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. And when Jesus comes back, the scripture says he's coming with a sword in his mouth. The personification of love is Jesus. Amen? And yet he has a sword in his mouth, a two-edged sword, the word of God. Amen. And I want you to understand today, if you, if, you, if you get hung up on this, just understand this, that the judgment of God, just like all of the gifts of God, were ordained from the foundation of the earth. In other words, he spoke what would bless you and what would bring curse to you, and from there on out, it's choice. If you understand that, then you understand that God is not spiteful. He is not waiting for you to mess up so he can slap you down. Preacher told me one time, God gave me back trouble. Well, I want you to know God didn't do that. You opened a door somehow, and God, but God didn't, he doesn't give people back trouble. What does he say he does? He said, I sent my word to heal you. Amen. I won't, he doesn't break legs. You understand that? God does not break legs, doesn't break backs, doesn't give cancer, doesn't give COVID-19. That's a weapon of the enemy. And I'll say it again, Isaiah 54. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against me in judgment, I will prove wrong. Amen? It's like in a court of law that you can see this happening. In the court of heaven, it's already established. Praise God. So God put his spirit in us, and by him, that's called anointing. The anointing. Jesus said, I have an anointing in Luke 4.18. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he hath anointed me. That's the way Jesus operated on this earth. Just like you and I operate. He didn't have special equipment that you and I can't have. No. He had the same equipment that we have. He had spirit, he had a soul, he had a body, and he had a will. But his will was steadfast. Say steadfast. Did you know in Hebrew, the word imunah is translated faith? But it means firm and steady. Firm and steady. Steadfast. 
That's the picture of Jesus, and that's what he wants by putting his spirit in us to bring about the same thing. Jesus said, my, the spirit of God is upon me because he's anointed me, and he talked about the things that he was anointed to do. All of them had to do with preaching and deliverance. Preaching, teaching, and healing the sick. That's what he went about doing. Amen. That's what he wants you to do. You're here to carry on. You say, carry, how could I carry on such a deal? Well, I don't know for sure how we do it. I know the means that he gave us, but I do know it's a big order, and yet he said it. John 14, 12, he said, the works that I do, Matt, you'll do also. Woo! Man, that ought to send chills up and down your spine. The works that Jesus did, Matt Victor's going to do. Praise God, I believe it. And by the way, you can just plug your name in. The works that I do. Jesus said, you'll do also. These works and greater works will you do because I go to my Father. Amen. You better get it down and get it believed. I trust it. It's the word of God. Amen. Paul, speaking about this very thing, he talked about the fact that his speech and his message were not in plausible words of wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. We just a couple of weeks ago ministered on the demonstration of the anointing. The anointing's demonstration. God gave us the anointing to demonstrate to the world His power. Amen. And He says the reason for that is so that your faith might not, might not rest in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Amen. This thing that Paul did, Paul spoke some wonderful words, wrote two-thirds to three-quarters, depends on who you listen to, of the newer covenant. He wrote those letters, and they've been established in the canon of Scripture as the Word of God. Amen. Written by Paul, but how did he say he did it? Not in plausible words of wisdom, but in the demonstration of the Spirit and power. In other words, I'm demonstrating actively what God's doing as I write to you, just like I believe and trust and, and, and in every way I'm endeavoring to do as I speak to you this morning. That my words not be something that I'm doing to be seen, not be something that I do to be clever, but that my words might be in demonstration of the Spirit and power. Amen. By the way, there's somebody in our group today. I don't know if you're here present or if you're out in, the, in the, the Facebook audience or if you'll be in the YouTube audience that listens to this. I don't know, but I just know you've been asking some questions of the Lord. You've got a big decision to make. The Lord says, just open up your heart. Just open your ears and listen, and I will show you. He said, if you'll open your mouth wide, I will fill it. Now, I want to tell you what that means. That doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're going to get a big mouth full of something. It means when you open your mouth wide into your heart, he's going to bring forth and you're going to begin to speak out the very solutions for the things that you do. Now, I want you to guard against this. I don't want you to start making reasons why it's so. That's not your job. You don't need the reason. All you have to do is say what God says. Speak what he says. You say, that sounds weird. Well, I want to say something to you about that. You know, there's a lot of people nowadays. I heard uh, one of our big politicians say the other day, you know, it's good to talk to God. Do you remember hearing that? A politician said this. It's a good thing to talk to God, but when you start hearing him talk back to you, look out. Do you remember when that was said not too long ago? Did you know that is a lie from the pit of hell? I know a politician said it, but it was the devil's words they were speaking. They were speaking, and the world wants you to believe that you're strange if you hear from God. But God says, as many as are led by the Spirit, these are my sons. Who are you going to listen to? I could name the person that said it, but I'm going to be kind. I'm not going to say it today. They'll have to be brought to account for it unless they repent themselves. But the fact is, we should, all believers should be hearing from God. 
all believers should be hearing from God. Say, I want to hear. Say, I will hear. Amen. 1 John 2.27. 1 John 2.27 says, But the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. Well, that just simply means what I said earlier. When God came to live in you, he doesn't come and go. He used to do that in the Old Testament. In the older, in the older covenant, men had not been born again, but God would come upon those who had tender hearts and would speak through them. He would give prophecies through them. He would give them instructions. Do you remember David asked the Lord one time, shall we pursue after the uh, enemies had come and kidnapped wives and pillaged their lands and everything? He asked the Lord. This is when he was living among the Philistines. Shall we pursue? And the Lord says, pursue. Aren't you glad David could hear that? I would sure hate to miss out on that story because the Bible says David pursued with his men and recovered all. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you want to recover all? Listen to your anointing. The anointing that you receive from him abides in you and you have no need that anyone should teach you. Now I'm going to say this. I'm available to all of you, but I'm your pastor, and I am just that. I am a teaching pastor. I'm a pastor who teaches the Word of God. I am not your final authority. And no, I will not say that I am infallible. God's Word is infallible, and as long as I stick to it, I am. But you can't rely on me. Well, I have a need. I've got to call the pastor. No, you don't. Actually, you can believe and trust on the Holy Ghost on the inside of you, and he'll bring it to pass. Now, what are we here for? We're to help build up one another. Because there's times when we need some extra help. But read what it says there. You have no need that anyone should teach you. I really believe that a lot of the problems within the congregations of God today is that too many people are trying to get all their answers from somebody's book, from somebody's question and answer, period, instead of from the anointing and from the Word of God. Now, a book can be anointed, don't get me wrong. But I, I sense so many times that people are putting undue honor to mankind and not enough to the anointing. Amen? It says, as his anointing, as his anointing teaches you about everything. I want you to stop right there for a second and say, about what? Everything. About what? Everything. 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 King James says all things. He teaches you about everything. Well, you know, we know that we need God when we're going to preach. I know that. I, I really need God when I'm going to preach. But how about when I go to the grocery store? Do I need God? What do I need Him for? Everything. Do I always rely on Him for everything? No, sometimes my appetite gets the best of me. You know what I'm saying? I know. And you know that confession is good, right? And sometimes I don't listen as closely as I should. Sometimes when I'm driving down the road, I don't listen as closely as I should. Are you listening to me? Are some of you recognizing that there are things that you could be doing that you could be doing a whole lot better if you'd listen? Everything. Everything. You know, you... you I've heard people get on people for saying, well, I asked the Lord what kind of toothpaste I ought to buy. Now, that sounds totally ridiculous, doesn't it, to most people's mind. But did you know that there may actually be something that the Lord could tell you that would actually change your dental health if you listen to him? Or... If he really doesn't care, how many of you believe the Lord can say, that decision is up to you, son? Amen? 
I put on a pair of socks this morning. I kind of put on the same kind of socks on Sunday morning. I like to have something dark down there. I used to be a, a white sock guy. I used to like to wear white socks everywhere I went. I had a really good friend, a real godly man, an executive for IBM, always wore white socks. And boy, did they ever stand out. You know, they really did. Well, as far as I know, the Lord told him to wear those because he was a very godly man. And, uh, you know, but it, it always looked funny. But we do that without asking, don't we? We, a lot of times, we do think, well, I can make those kind of decisions for myself. And chances are that's true. That's probably true. But, you know, think about this. Maybe it's time for a new automobile. Or maybe you haven't even asked the Lord if it's time for a new automobile. Or maybe you just have in your mind already that I need a new automobile and so it's time. How about we stop and let him teach us about everything? Say everything. everything. Do you believe there might be success in that? I said, do you believe there might be success? Somebody said, well, we have the Word of God. And I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you mentioned the fact we have the Word of God. We do. We've got the Word of God. But you know, you need to understand Torah. By the way, Torah does not mean law. It means instruction. It's God's instruction. We have God's instruction written out. But did you know the the fact is that everything that will ever happen in your life There's a lot of it mentioned there. But in those 603,000, I forgot now, 804 words, letters that are in that, 800 and whatever it is, everything that could happen to you at a specific time isn't there. So what we have, if you look at it with me like this, if you were a pilot, you'd have certain places that would be called safe airspace. You know what I'm talking about? It'd be safe airspace. You'd have airspace that that ends at the uh, international boundaries of the United States. That would be safe airspace. If you fly over certain areas of this country, you have to fly at a certain altitude. And by the way, I'm not a pilot, so don't hold me to any of this other than generally. Amen? But you know, there are certain times when you would know that it wasn't good to fly at all. Right? Right? Certain places you can't go at all. I guarantee when Marine One took off from the White House the other day that Reagan shut down at that time. Do you believe that? Reagan Airport shut down when the helicopters, now I don't mean they shut it down and just kicked everybody out, but there was no traffic. They stopped air traffic at that time. What was that? Those are general rules, general instructions, general things that we know about things. That's what God's Torah is. And if you look at it, it's, it's his boundary. It's his framework of everything that's right. But within that framework, we so need to have the Holy Spirit show us where we ought to be. Do you understand that? That's how he teaches us about everything teaches about everything. And please don't think that I'm saying, well, we shouldn't be systematic in our reading of the word. We can be systematic. We can go through it, but please be sensitive. Say sensitive. Say sensitive. In fact, today, I'm going to really believe that the Holy Spirit is going to enable us all to grow in our sensitivity. To increase our sensitivity, to develop our sensitivity to the things of God. That's what I want. You know, you can get all the rules down, and you know what you become? You become a legalist. You become a legalist. You know the rules so well, and legalists always do something. I don't know if you know this or not. But in addition to the specific written things, they have to write little commentaries about how they apply in every situation. The Jews call that their halacha, the way you should walk. I want you to know, people, 
We have a spirit of God working in our spirits. And he wants to talk to you. He's talking all the time. Now, I don't mean that he chatters. Don't get me wrong. But I believe that he is giving us specific instructions as much as we will receive them. That's a big order. But you know what? It takes a lot of the stress out of living. Doesn't it? I hear from God. What am I going to talk about today? You know, people talk about this all the time. You need to prepare a sermon. Sunday's coming. I've got to get a sermon prepared. Do you know what I do? What I like to do? I just like to pray in the Spirit. And then shut up and listen. Amen. I pray in the Spirit. Sometimes it's real quick. Sometimes while I'm praying in the Spirit, I hear. Other times while I'm praying in the Spirit, I may hear about something else. But later on, the Lord will begin to develop something. It begins to rise up in me. And by the way, I don't pray in the Spirit once or twice a week. I don't spray, pray in the Spirit once or twice a day. I'm endeavoring, I'm endeavoring to compete with Paul. Paul said, I thank God I pray in tongues more than ye all. Amen? You know why he was saying that? Because he recognized what it was doing in him. I'm really not competing, by the way. That sounds a little bit cheap. The anointing. That's what we're talking about. What does the anointing do? Well, I want you to notice down here, he talks about everything, but he says, as his anointing teaches. And is no lie, just as it has taught you, abide in him. The anointing teaches you, it has taught you, and it works in his abiding presence. Or in my presenting myself to him. Amen. There's a miracle goes on here. I don't want you to think you can sit down and diagram this thing out with a pencil and paper. It's bigger than that. But you abide in him. And the scripture says, if any man be in the Messiah, he's a new creation. Old things pass away and behold, all things become new. I want to abide in him. Abide in him. Why? Because I want everything new. Everything is what he wants to teach me about. And I want everything new. Because the Bible says that's what happens to us. All things become new. Amen. I said this Torah is instruction, but it's also teaching. The teaching and instruction of God. The great framework of God. But now within that framework, God takes within that, it still applies, it's still, uh, it's still in concord or agreement with the word, but within it, he gives us specific instruction. Say specific instruction. That's what I need. I need specific instruction. General instruction is not good enough. Amen. How many of you have a uh, GPS in your car? How many of you have found that sometimes it can lead you astray? I, there have been times I would have been in the lake if I'd have followed the GPS, not this one. But there have been places where I would have turned into a, a hazard. Quite often, it tells me, in a place where it's got a big sign up says no U-turn, it says make a safe and legal U-turn. Well, it's telling me to make a legal one, but at the same time, it's doing it in a place where I can't. So what I'm saying, that's good general instruction. But if I tried to take that specifically, something would have to give. You understand? So we need to understand that the Lord wants us to understand through his anointing, which teaches us about everything. The psalmist understood this. Clear back in the time that he lived, 1000 B.C. or whatever it is, he said, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. One of my favorite parts of Moses' life was when Moses was before the Lord and he said, show me thy ways that I might walk with thee. Show me thy ways. He wants the teaching of the Lord. And the Lord did teach Moses. He taught him things that 
man could never have figured out. Think about this tabernacle, this model of the tabernacle, the intricacies of the tab tabernacle. I, I sometimes think, you know, if I had time, I would like to sit down and see if I could actually fashion that exactly the way the Lord said. And you know what I decided? Even with all the instructions he gives, you're still going to have to have the leading of the Holy Spirit or you're not going to get it right. What did Moses have? He actually got to see it. I believe he saw it. You say, where did he see it? Personally, I believe that when he was up on the mount, the Lord took him right up into glory. He says, build it the way I showed you in the, in the mount. I believe he took him and showed him how it actually is. Did you know there's a tabernacle in heaven? Did you know it's already there? Praise God. Did you know there's an altar in heaven? Hallelujah. I believe when Jesus went there, after he raised from the dead, he took his own blood and applied it to that altar in heaven. I believe that. Some people don't believe that. That's all right. I wouldn't argue with them about it. I just believe that's the way God does things. Amen. Show me thy ways, the psalmist said. Teach me thy paths. He says again in the 25th, Lead me in thy truth and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait once in a while during the day. When it's handy during the day, I wait for you. When I have an opportunity, that's when I can do the things that you want me to do. When nothing else is going on and I don't have other obligations. No, he said all the day. I don't know if you know it, but David was a busy man. Up through most of his life, he was busy. Amen. Hallelujah. It says in Psalm 143, 10, Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. The Spirit is good. Thy Spirit is good. Now, what's he doing? He's telling me, I understand this is the way I'm going to learn, is by your Spirit. Thy Spirit is good. Lead me into the land of uprightness. Amen. Amen. When Jesus talked about himself, we know that he said he was anointed. But listen to what he said about himself during the time of his ministry. There were a lot of times, you know, he got criticized for everything he did. You know, I, uh, it's just amazing. You know, he'd do something, heal somebody, make them well, and there would be people there to criticize him. He would tell someone their sins were forgiven, and right away the religious people would rile up. Amen. This is what he says during that time in John 8, 28. In fact, I want to give you a few quick scriptures out of John. Then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. Now let's go back to what he said earlier about what the anointing will do. It will teach you about everything. What did he say here? He confirms it. He says, I do nothing of myself. I do nothing of myself. Now, he walked this earth like you do, like I do. He walked this earth in a physical body. He walked this earth with a lot, without a lot of the conveniences that we have. Amen. I don't know if you realize it, but up to a, just a little short time ago, people had to carry their water to drink it. They couldn't just turn a knob. Would you believe that I grew up on a farm that had no running water when I was first living there? We got running water while I was living there. We used to go out into a wooden barrel that the windmill ran into, and we would dip a pail into that, and we would take it back in the house and drink with a dipper. And we didn't have any face masks. Amen. That's the way we used to do it. Now, if we didn't have running water, I think you can guess where our bathroom might have been without running water. It wasn't in the house. When Henrietta graduated from high school, the farm that they lived on had no bathroom in the house. 1961. Oh, I'm not supposed to tell anything about your age. Think about it. Jesus had to do a lot of stuff, but he says, I don't do anything of myself. 
And as the Father hath taught me, I speak these things. What did he say? Well, the Bible says if everything had been written down that he said, even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. That's what John said at the end of his gospel. And yet he said, I didn't say anything of myself. I said, oh, what the Father taught me, he taught me, that's what I speak. Are you ready to let the Holy Spirit teach you? Are you ready for it? Well, in John 14, 26, the Bible says, my sheep, or John 10, 27, first of all, he says, my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. Are you a sheep? Say, bah. <laughs> a sheep, we need to remind ourselves that we're his sheep. And as a shepherd, he tenderly tends us. But he said, we also can hear his voice. We recognize his voice. Some of you need to someday pick up Philip Keller's book on a shepherd's view of the 23rd Psalm and read it and see how he talks about how different flocks of sheep in Israel with different shepherds would get all mingled together during the day in these big meadows. And at the end of the day, the shepherds would call. And to their voice, the sheep would come. The flocks would just spread out again to their individual flocks when, because they knew the shepherd's voice. How much more can we know the voice of the Father? My sheep hear my voice. I'm not giving you something today that's fantasy. I'm not giving you something today that's hard. I'm not telling you something today that you're going to have to work and work and work to do, but you will have to decide that you want to increase your sensitivity. It's a decision you're going to have to make. Amen. You're going to have to decide, I want to hear clearly. Amen. Jesus said to the Jews who believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. Well, we generally think that just means taking the written word. But here I believe there's something even closer than that. He says, you'll know the truth. How do you know the truth? By the Holy Spirit. By the Spirit of God showing you what those written words mean. Amen. You'll know the truth and the truth will make you free. In John 14, 26, we're told exactly how that happens. But the comforter, Greek word paraklesis or paraclete, the one which is called alongside us to help, Jesus said, which is the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall do what? Teach me all things. Oh, yeah, but there's some things I don't need to be taught about because I already know them. I've already got those figured out. How many of you have ever been in trouble because you thought you knew something you didn't know? Remember, I helped somebody tune up his car one time. And I decided, well, I know how to do this. And he bought new spark plug wires, and I put them on, and that car wouldn't run. Anybody know why? I thought I knew where the number one port on the distributor was, and I didn't. And I had it mistimed completely. It didn't take much to get it fixed, but it showed that I thought I knew something I didn't know. And that happens so often. Something simple. I said something simple. You can think you know about it and mess it up really good. The Bible says he will teach you all things. And he will bring to your remembrance the things that I have said unto you. He'll take them right out of here. Amen. He'll tell you right exactly what Jesus said. Bring to our remembrance. And then tell us what it means. Amen. I always like to quote these two together even though they're in different chapters, John 14, 26, and John 16, 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak, and he'll show you things to come. I believe the Holy Spirit is showing us things to come today. I believe we're seeing more clearly than we've ever seen. I believe it's available to you. 
I believe you can learn. I believe you can come to the place. How do we do this? How do we come to this place? How can we make this commitment? I go back to an old proverb. Proverbs chapter 3. Anybody know where I'm going? Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Now that's a, that's a powerful word by itself. But get verse 6. In all, say all, all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. I believe there's two big ways that the Lord wants to start directing your path. Number one is in your prayer. Too many people are still praying like they have rosaries. Amen. I'm not saying you're saying the Hail Marys and the Our Fathers. I'm not saying that. Although the Our Father is repeated an awful lot. And Jesus never did teach it as a prayer. He taught it as a, as a, as a outline of prayer. That's what he taught it as. But I believe in your prayer you need to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. You say, yeah, but if I got a list, then I won't forget anything. Oh, you're better than the Holy Spirit, huh? And your list is that complete that you can pray about everything the Lord wants you to pray about? Did you know He wants you to pray? Why? Not so He can hear you and give you what you're asked, but so that you can speak His will into the earth. That's what He wants you to do with His Word. Speak it out into the world. Say it. Your prayer. Your prayer. The second one is a simple one. Very simple. This is probably mentioned more times in Scripture than you even know, but in your giving. I said in your giving. Your giving is one of the, I believe, the primary ways the Lord teaches us about being led by the Spirit of God. I really believe it. I, I'll tell you what, I've missed it so many times. I know how easy it is to immediately do what the disciples did and said, why, well, it would take a whole month's pay to feed all these people. But if the Lord tells you to do something, and He shows you something, He's not doing it to test you. It will be a test, perhaps, but that's not why He's doing it. He's doing it to teach you to be attentive to Him in your giving. Do you know some people never listen to God about their giving? Well, I give the tithe. It's enough. I give the tithe. Did you know in Scripture the tithe was the beginning? No. It's just the beginning. Tithes and offerings. Tithes. Well, I, I have this much I get. That's all I can give. What if God tells you to give more? What if, what if like a man I was listening to the other day, he said, I went to a meeting and ministered. And he said, I, at the time, got no salary except what I got from meetings. That's all I got. And he said, they received an offering that day for me. And he said, they handed that offering to me. And he said, I, I needed it more than I can tell you. And he said, it was exactly what my monthly budget would have been. He said it was the big. The pastor told me that's the biggest offering we've ever received in this church. And the guy said, oh, hallelujah, praise God. But the Spirit of God on the inside of him said, see that missionary sitting over there? You go give it to him. <laughs> you know, that's a get behind me Satan moment. <laughs> but he did it he gave it to him and he said then they asked me to go out to dinner with him and he said while we were out there one of the I guess he was an elder in that group spoke to him some of you may have heard him on, on I think I heard him just the other day on uh, one, of the, one of the Christian channels telling this he said, I gave him the whole thing. And he said, one of these guys that was sitting there from that church asked me about that offering. He said, did they give you that offering? Yeah. Well, how much was it? I told him. He said, where is it? 
He said, I didn't want to tell him I'd given it away. He said, I thought, well, you know, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing and all that stuff. And he said, I just said, uh, uh, my wife has it. Just lied through his teeth. He said, when I went back, after I came back, I said, no, she doesn't have it. It's in the car. <laughs> he said, when I sat down with the guy again, he wouldn't let it go. He said, I want to see that check. And he says, I'll tell you why. Because the Holy Spirit told me, you gave that check away. You know what God did? He replenished everything he had given and some. Why? Because he was willing to be led by the Spirit of God. Are you led by a balance sheet? A profit and loss statement? What's another good report that we look at? Cash flow. Are you led by those things or are you led by the Spirit of God? Your giving is one area where God can really change the way you hear Him. He'll use that to teach you in many, many, many other ways if you'll be diligent to hear Him. And don't you think that the Lord's going to start out and say, well, you just give two mites because you know that's a Bible story. No. He's liable to tell you to give big. Are you willing? How much do you want to be led by the Spirit of God? By the way, the offerings received here, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not doing this to receive anything today. And by the way, thank you for all that have given. For all of you that have sent in, I thank you so much. But I want you to know that I really believe that as you give, you'll hear more clearly. You'll be led more clearly. If you listen to him, now I'm not talking about getting out and trying God and just giving more and more and more than, than, you know, to see if you can get him to do something. I want you to listen to his voice. I want you to hear from him. When you pray, listen to what he says to pray about and to how he says to pray about it. He'll give you the words to speak over every circumstance and situation. In your giving who you're to give to. You know, when you're, when you're watching Christian TV, don't you get into that, all oh, them televangelists say just that's all they're here for. Don't you dare do that. Don't you dare talk about God's anointed people that way. That's not why they're there. There may be some bad eggs, but I want to tell you what. You listen to what the Holy Spirit says. I've heard people say things like this. Well, they have such a big budget. They get so, you know, they, get, they draw from so many places. You know, when you've got big, big ministries, you have to draw from big, big places. Amen? Give when the Lord tells you. You say, well, that's, that's amazing. Well, I'm going to tell you an even simpler area. You may be walking down the street, and you may see somebody, and he may be one of those guys saying, hey, buddy, could you, could you spare me a dollar? Well, the scripture says, give to them that ask you. But you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. I said, you need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Did you know sometimes he'll have you stop and give to somebody? I gave to somebody in a parking lot one day because the Holy Spirit stopped me. He didn't, I was, <laughs> he stopped me fast enough, but I didn't listen quick enough. And I had to drive clear around and come back into that parking lot because he said, I want you to give them money. I want you, this is what I want you to give. And I gave exactly what he told me to give. You can do it. You can be led by the Spirit of God. It is an entry point. Listen, it's an entry point. It's not in itself the final analysis. But giving is an area where people stumble so often that I believe the Lord uses that to teach us. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Well, we have to quit. I didn't get my five-minute notice today, but I know it's time because I can see the clock. Amen. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Let's stand together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship and adore you. We thank you, Lord, that there is a place in you where we can hear you clearly. There is a place in you where this mind of mind can be brought under control to hear the things of the Spirit. I'm training myself 
to hear from God. I'm training myself. I'm developing myself to hear from you, to hear what you say in every circumstance and in every situation. I'm excited about it. I want to do it. I want to be led by you. I've talked about giving, Father. I just want you to know I want to hear you about my giving more than I ever have before. I want to hear you about the way I pray about things. I don't want to have some rote prayer that comes out of me. I want to have the Spirit of God bringing forth your powerful words through me. I thank you for it. I give you praise for it. We thank you that the people that are here today, the people that are under the sound of this message today, are being changed. They're being softened. They're being uh, moved in a way that will cause them to become more and more sensitive to the things of the Spirit of God. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Eva Rekaka Adonai Vayishme Reka. Yair Adonai Panavaleka Vikaneka. Yis Adonai Panavaleka Vyasem Laka Shalom. Now Yahweh blesses you. He keeps you. He makes his face shine upon you and is gracious unto you. Yahweh lifts you up in the light of his countenance and gives you his shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken, in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen.